Hi there, and welcome back to this series of video where we're studying the not so simple fly mechanics of Fighter Man. And let me give you an update. So, well, the last time we talked about assumptions that we have it here, but now let's talk about the mesh I will provide in the data repository, the meshes and so on. So I decided to go for the 10 millimeters one. I mentioned that the 20 millimeters, but it's both a little bit sloppy. So it's better to use this when not much change. It's still, we have some issues in the mesh, which I want to keep because I want to compare also different machine tool to see which one gives the best results. So this is what we're using. Then the domain, I will get prepared to measure. So for the moment, I have this one ready that I will share with this spherical one. I think is the best one because we want to do, you know, the aerodynamics, all the different angles of attack and probably bank angles and so on. So this one, you can rotate the whole domain. Instead, this, you need to, you have two options. So the one that you rotate the geometer and you do need to redo everything. So it's time consuming, or you can change the incoming velocity. Okay. Which my next to change boundary conditions here, 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 each time that you change the angle of attack. Okay. So also maybe a little bit time consuming, but it's not a big deal. I would prefer to use this one. And actually I'm doing my initial computations with this one. So talking about the initial mesh, I will share this mesh, a fully polyhedral mesh. Okay. I will prepare some other, but I think this one is a very nice one. So here we mesh everything and see so that. We have a nice resolution about the body, uh, an inflation layer there, very nice, nicely done. And to do this one, I'm using an OCFD, CFD, but also I would like to use the Snappy X when I'm fluid meshing and compare all the tools. So we know all the problems that the Snappy has. So with, with the Snappy head meshes, okay, in OpenFund, for those using OpenFund, it will be really tricky to generate that boundary layer instead when you move to commercial tools. In this case, it now it works very well. Let's see what Fluent will give for other tools. So after having the mesh, what I will ask the contributions just to fill in these tables. Okay, so here we have this totally different. As we mentioned, the hypothesis, let's limit the Mach number to 0 0.5, which I think there we are below the critical Mach number, no shock waste, local, local supersonic flow, and so on. And let's just study angle of attack from my, minus 6 to 6 to see and compute forces. Okay, I don't want to confuse coefficients, the actual forces. So the lift and drag forces in Newtons and also the moment. The moment is not so important just to get any ideas if it is the pitch down, pitch out. So far I know it's pitch out, but let's see what happens different software some people. And by the way, you can use different software. Okay, so not necessarily open phone this. You want to use something else. It's up to you. <clears throat> And also let's compute these uh, computations at a standard sea level conditions. Okay. So as you can see this, as you probably those doing this night performance studies, you know that these are table after table. So this will be the first table for these conditions. Then we increase the height. I know we go to a thousand meters, two thousand, three thousand and so on. Okay. So we have all the tables, but this one is in the, the initial starting point, good enough to create a model. And then we can test it. No, a PID, uh, a PID system, or we can construct some models there. And now let me throw in the word here. So AI and machine learning. Okay. So probably with XGBoost will be the, the, the best one to construct the model, but create interpolation. It doesn't matter. So I will share this data. Hopefully some people will jump in, jump in and contribute. So this is the data repository. Okay. You have everything there centralized. And if you want to contribute here, just drop me an email. I'm very important. All the data, the surface meshes and mesh provided everything that I'm post processing. Sometimes I'm scaling the stuff. Sometimes Sometimes I'm not scaling stuff, so be careful that when you do the height of item, it needs to be something approximately about 1.9 meters. Okay, so be careful about that. I don't recall what what is the scaler now, but it's not a problem. You just need to to do the scaling the tool that you are using. So before ending, also just to show you about the geometries. Okay, so these are all the geometries with the different features that. And using so the final one will, will be this one. So see that we're capturing everything. Probably we can erase some components there, but this is very nice one. Okay, but let let's stick with this one, the 10 millimeters. Okay, and I like this one because see that we start have it's not very smooth the mesh, some holes there, some spikes there. So what I want to test, as I mentioned, there is that 
uh, how the meshing tools behave okay and remember that the original one it wasn't a scale so this is the original geometry okay so it is kind of a monster this iron man one it's almost 2.3 meters so after scaling you get something like that so very important do not forget about scaling their geometry so i am scaling everything to have very conservative 1.9 meters but who knows can be 1.8 whatever okay so this is about geometry and the domain now mentioned in the body domain so we can have the circular on the other do the other rectangular domain uh and to end about the mesh and using this tool in Nova, okay then i would try to do it with a snappy and ansys free mesh so basically we're reading the geometry doing a very nice surface mesh and just to give you an idea how it looks like so aligning the polyhedral okay i like polyhedral elements a very nice polyhedral mesh around the body okay so see that we're resolving well all features there capturing everything so everything that is coming in that surface triangulation is capture wall and see that there you, we have a <coughs> the beginning some spikes and see that kind of this is smooth the, those spikes there but also we can use some smoothing and try to resolve those problems but here it's not a big deal okay it worked fine generate dimension and actually just to show you i export it into formats okay so we have it in the influent format okay and also in open form format and just to show you that probably is here so this is the open form format i exported already and this is the chat mesh okay we have it there and let's see what open form has to say so this is the cell count okay so also some for 400 thousand a little bit more than 400 thousand cells we keep reading here and we go to the important part the mesh quality and see that this is relatively good mesh and also an rt80 that is very good value a little bit high discussion but it's also okay i know precisely and i think also you know precisely where we have those high sq cells okay so you look at the geometry and all the defects that you have but see that we have a dirty geometry with a lot of uh problems and we managed to get a very good uh mesh that no doubt open phone would digest very well this mesh so let me go back to the geometry here to the actual mesh so we have here the surface mesh and look at how well it solves the the surface detail so it's basically getting everything that is coming for the surface triangulation and then it's putting no uh it's on mesh here we have those spikes okay so likely probably we are going to have some excusers cells there okay but it's not a big deal okay then also we have a very good inflation ledger so stuff like this doing in in open phone and snappy x mesh it's very difficult i'm quite sure that you are not going to get it here you have a basically 100 percent coverage all around even in the areas where you have you no know, really bad meshes. So here we have a hole and we're also meshing inside. So also here likely we're going to have bad quality cells. And we look, we go far and see that this is our mesh. Okay, so we have polyhedral that are aligned with our reference axis. And nice property about these cells is that they align this polyhedral, they align the, as they have more faces, they can align with the flow and that reduce on truncation error, but also they reduce the cell count. Now to construct this this the cells we need to use tetra pyramids and usually they reduce you now the cell count so by a factor of six or four okay so if we do this one with, with tetra the tetra will be likely three millions or more with poly we reduce this one to almost a uh, half a million cells okay and if you use excess excess is the same stuff that you will reduce by a factor from tetra you will reduce by a factor of two to four so excess are also are also nice but they, they they can degenerate really really fast so this is the other advantage of poly that it doesn't matter the geometry they can adapt very easily because you have more faces so they can shape around those 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 strange geometries instead an x uh, it will de degenerate very 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 easily so as you put x's here close to the surface likely in regions like this you're going to have problems and maybe you're already familiar with open from with those problems okay so this is the mesh that we have i'm sharing this is the initial one later we'll upload more information but also i'm looking for feedback from you so if you are getting some results just please share the information now 
remember to fill in this table this is what we're looking for and we're looking also for different software okay i already have an idea what is happening okay but we need a little bit more results do not forget to scale everything so see that here i'm working and i forgot to scale so in this case we will need to scale by by 0 0.001 okay 0 0.001 yes i think but be careful about that okay that's all thank you for your attention see you next time bye